The Islamabad High Court has ordered for the release of Fawad Chaudhry of PTI and has given him two days of pre-arrest bail in all pending cases. Punjab's anti-terror squad was outside of the court and they tried to detain him once again as his bail was not accepted by the anti-terror court. The police tried to nab him but he ran inside the court and there were some pretty dramatic visuals of him running and trying to save himself that are now doing the rounds on social media. A German court has convicted about five members of a criminal gang for snatching priceless 18th century jewels housed at the Dresden Museum. The convicts have been given about six years of prison time. The thieves made away with a haul of nearly about $123 million from the Green Vault Museum in November 2019. However, only some of the loot has now been recovered. The Taiwan's parliament has passed an amendment allowing for gay couples to jointly adopt children. The amendment is the reformed version of the marriage law. Taiwan is home to a thriving LGBTQ community. And the law comes after Taiwan's top court ruled that denying same-sex couples the right to marry was really discriminatory. A Hong Kong newspaper has removed a satirical cartoon after a decade-long run following the tussle with authorities and this is being seen as the latest blow to media freedom in the China-ruled city and Ming Pao newspaper has published a notice regarding the same where it has stated that its intention of scrapping the comic strip by Wong Ki Kwan and he is now Hong Kong's most prominent political cartoonist and is famous for his satirical jokes on Chinese politics. The Hong Kong authorities have repeatedly emphasized that media freedoms are respected, but police have raided and also shut down several liberal media outlets, including the Apple Daily newspaper and Stan News. Now, the Chinese Foreign Ministry has detained a South Korean soccer player suspected of taking bribes from non-state workers, the South Korean soccer player Son Jun Ho is being held in police custody in northeast China in connection with the bribery case. It's been five years since Russia had inaugurated the Kirsch Bridge, the 12-mile long bridge that holds pivotal strategic and symbolic value for Russia. It links the Crimean Peninsula to mainland Russia and it is a symbol of Moscow's direct claim on Crimea. In October 2022, the bridge was hit by what Moscow has said was a truck bomb and has blamed Ukraine for the attack. However, Russia has repaired the damaged section of the bridge and has restored the flow of supplies to Crimea. French President Emmanuel Macron has said that France is ready to train Ukrainian fighter jet pilots in France and those training programs could start immediately. Now, his comments have come just hours after Britain promised Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky long-range attack drones when he visited the country on Monday as part of the European tour aimed at securing new weapons for the counter-offensive. Macron said that France will also deliver more equipment including long-range missiles that would enable Ukraine to carry out counter-offensive. But a deadly fire has ripped through a multi-storied hostel in New Zealand's capital. The blaze has killed at least about six people and has left several others injured. The incident happened at Loafer's Lodge Hostel in central Wellington last night during the night. Towering flames of thick smoke were seen coming out of the hostel's roof. The police and emergency services and multiple people have died and 52 people have been rescued. The officials have said that the number of deaths could in fact rise and the exact number of fatalities still remains undetermined. The police have said that the cause of the fire remains unexplained and they will work with fire services to determine as to what has happened.
Now, blast in a barber shop in Luhansk has injured nearly about seven people, including a Russian official. The Russian official Igor Konit was appointed as the acting interior minister of the Luhansk region and is currently in the hospital in a serious condition. The Russian investigative committee has opened a criminal investigation as it suspects the blast was in fact aimed at killing the Russian official. Another case of deadly gun violence has been reported in the United States. At least four people, including the teen, teen gunman, have been killed in a shooting in New Mexico State. The shooter is believed to have acted alone. The gunman is reported to be an 18-year-old, and the shooting took place in a residential area of Farmington in New Mexico, near the U.S. border with Mexico. Two officials were wounded in an exchange of gunfire before the police shot him dead just outside of the church. The condition of the officials is reported to have stabilized later. A new report about the FBI probe into Donald Trump's 2016 presidential campaign states that the agency has relied too heavily on tips provided by Trump's political opponents. The new report has also suggested that the U.S. intelligence and law enforcement did not possess any actual evidence of collusion between Donald Trump's campaign and Russia prior to launching the probe that's been dubbed as Crossfire Hurricane. In response to the report, the FBI has said that it has already implemented dozens of corrective actions that have been in place for quite some time. Rudy Giuliani's former associate is suing him for sexual assault and harassment. The plaintiff, Noel Dunphy, has said that Giuliani began abusing her, most, her almost immediately after hiring her in January 2019 as a director of business development and making it clear that satisfying his sexual demands was an absolute requirement of her job. The lawsuit seeks at least about $10 million in terms of damages from Giuliani and three of his namesake companies. According to the complaint, Giuliani promised to pay Dunphy $1 million a year but said that her pay had to be deferred and her employment should be kept a secret. Now, the US Virgin Islands has subpoenaed Elon Musk as part of its lawsuit against JP Morgan. They requested for documents from the billionaire and the allegations that JP Morgan Chase had benefited financially from Jeffrey Epstein's sex trafficking operation and the move comes in response to the bank's knowledge of long-time client Jeffrey Epstein's sex trafficking. The petition asking Musk to present the documents hasn't, does not charge him of any wrongdoing. Instead, it indicates that he was a high net worth individual who might have been introduced to JP Morgan, Morgan by Epstein. Now, hundreds of people demonstrated in Argentina's capital on Monday, protesting against the recent Israeli airstrikes in the Gaza Strip. In solidarity with their cause, the Palestinians and the organizations marched to the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires. They shouted slogans against Israel and the Israeli-Palestinian violence has been intensifying for months with frequent Israeli military raids. The Palestinians have also marked about 35 years of the Nakba Day. It symbolizes the day when nearly about 800,000 Palestinians were pushed out of their homes in 1948 by the violence that was unleashed by the Zionist militias before the establishment of the State of Israel. The IMF has said that Sri Lanka's crisis at economy is expected to begin bouncing back by 2024. The country took a bit of a dent of 3% this year amidst its worst economic crisis since independence. An IMF team is currently visiting Sri Lanka until the 23rd of May ahead of the program's first review later this year. And they are now expected to evaluate the progress that is made on reforms so far and complete an exercise to improve governance and spot weaknesses in six key areas of the economy. The Sri Lankan economy's growth forecast of 1.5% next year hinges on economic reform that the country has now undertaken and their successful implementation.
The U.S. Pacific Northwest is experiencing record high temperatures for this time of the year. Temperatures at Seattle Tacoma International Airport was at 31 degrees Celsius. The previous record high was about 30 degrees Celsius. And according to the National Weather Service, temperatures in Seattle will remain well above normal throughout the rest of the week. And according to the National Weather Service, at Seattle Center, people gathered at the International Fountain to beat the heat. Super cyclone Mocha has wreaked havoc in Myanmar and Bangladesh on Sunday and Monday, laying waste to entire communities before it dissipated. The storm that originated in the Bay of Bengal made a landfall between Cox's Bazar in Bangladesh and Myanmar's Sitwe. At least about 41 people have been killed in Myanmar, with the death toll now expected to rise as more than 100 people are still missing. There have been no reports of any casualties in Bangladesh. More than 860 homes and 14 health facilities and seven communication towers were damaged in Myanmar. In Bangladesh, officials have reported evacuating nearly about 750,000 people and 12,000 homes were fully or partially destroyed. A shelter for animals evacuated from war zones in Ukraine has been set up by a former veterinary worker in Kharkiv. Volunteer and dog specialist Robert Sarsgyan, the founder of Animals 911, started helping the abandoned animals in March 2022. The animals abandoned because of war get shelter and the required treatment and some are rehoused with new families through social networks and they're often made to stay abroad. The mausoleum of Soccer Great Pele has been opened for fans in the coastal city of Santos. The place is covered in artificial grass surrounded by images of fans on the stands. The mausoleum was planned by the owner of the cemetery and also a close friend of Pele. The three-time World Cup champion died of colon cancer on the 29th of December last year at the age of 82. A Nigerian chef cooked for over a hundred hours, surpassing the current record of Hilda Bachi, who was cooking since last week to beat the Guinness record of 87 hours and 45 minutes that was set in 2019 by Lata Tandon, who was an Indian chef. But attempting to beat the record, the Nigerian chef wanted to show us to how hard working the Nigerian youth are and also to campaign for Af young African women who are sidelined in the society. An anemic and malnourished sloth was rescued by the national park teams in southern Peru. At the time of the rescue, the young female sloth had a body temperature of 21 degrees Celsius and was placed in an incubator to stabilize her health. And according to the veterinarian doctors, the animal was poorly fed and had signs of mistreatment. The manager of Peru's National Forest and Wildlife Service said that the sloth is now recovering and is stable but will remain under observation before being released in the jungle next month.